A certain scientific railgun has been one of my favorite shows I've seen this past year, which is saying something because there are a lot of good shows I saw. It's a shame that I haven't talked about Railgun uh, any because it deserves more attention, especially with the third season coming out next season. Though that's why I like to be in the 12 days. I can talk about these shows that I want to talk about, but I haven't really had a good reason to. Railgun feels like a story that I've seen a hundred times before with a school for magic users, a mix of slice of life and action, along with the occasional fan service. But Railgun were one of the pioneers of the genre that many other shows have tried copying and tried copying poorly. So while Railgun may seem cliche at times, their cliches done well, so it's worth watching for historical significance if anything. Plus, I mean, it's a good show. For this video though, I want to talk about one of the most cliche parts of the show, and that is the final episode of season two. When I was watching it, the episode felt like it was going down a checklist of all the things a good final episode of anime is supposed to have. And I loved every second of it. It was like it knew what the audience of anime fans was looking for, and how to pull the right emotional strings to deliver a fulfilling finale. So let's talk about how it pulls off a perfectly cliche finale. The episode starts off with a sort of emotional moment about the new character who is the focus of the arc, to like set the stage for what is coming. Of course, Rogan is not about emotions, at least for the most part, but instead action. And that is how the episode really kicks off, cutting to judgment, rallying their forces, along with all the characters' friends, to fight against the robot army. What I really like about this scene is how the characters are fighting with what makes them special. Sure, you have all the Esper abilities, but you also have the characters who don't have big fleshy powers fighting in their own ways, like Uriharu controlling the robots. Plus, the opening is playing, which... That just adds to the hype of the scene. The scene really is a thematic climax of the show, since season 2 is all about Misaka learning to not do everything herself, so she has all her friends here fighting for her. Plus, if you read the lyrics of the opening of this plane, that really adds to it too. Plus, one of the big ideas of Railgun is how people can make a difference whether they are strong or weak. And we see this here, with the characters fighting with Esper powers, or in their more unique ways. Really, this is how you kick off a final episode. But of course, you need the main character to do something cool during the final episode, especially when you have a main character as cool as Misaka. So they give her an army of robots to fight on her own as she wants to save Beverly, and she fights him with the music continuing to play because of course it does. The final battle is not going to have things go according to plan, so the tides turn against judgment with two powerful mechs showing up, and then we see Misaka getting worn out in her battle, and more advanced mechs show up to fight her. But then we have more allies show up, including a network of telepaths bringing forward a plot from season one to the big finale. And now the second opening for the season plays. Then we have Satan and Oriharu get in a mech courtesy of Misako that Satan had memorized the controls for the night prior. Again, showing how Satan does not have powers of her own, but she's still able to contribute to the battle in a really special way. Satan even comments that she's a level zero as she takes out one of the enemies, showing that she can be cool without any powers. Then we have Meltdowner and her friends take down the mechs that are attacking Misaka, Again, bringing something from a previous arc forward for the final battle. And it is so cool seeing everything come together for this final battle. So, halfway through the episode, the battle seems to be over. But any true final anime villain will have a last trick up their sleeve. In this case, killing himself and setting the city to be destroyed. But Misaka stops him before he can pull the trigger and lectures him, delivering the show's message that was explored all throughout the season. But that's not enough to save the city. Oh no. Like all good final anime episodes, there is one final battle that goes beyond anything so far. Any real against case, it's stopping a missile. They also decide to throw in the OVA's opening in here because, well, this is the finale. You gotta use all the openings. Though, when they find out about the missile, they can't figure out how they can stop it. Until the sisters end up helping out. I admit, I don't really understand how that worked, but whatever. Then they take the role of the older sister to help up Johnny and Beverly, showing how the kindness Misaka showed them is now being passed down. Anyway, Misaka and Kuroko hop in the mech and then head to space to stop the missile with the second opening of the first season plane. Then you have Misaka and Kuroko teleporting out of the mech, and Misaka lives up to her name of Railgun, but instead of firing a coin, she fires the entire mech at the missile to stop it. Then Kuroko teleports her safely back to the ground. Then we get a happy ending showing what all the characters have fought for. Hard of me wants to complain that things here don't really make sense, like everything involving space. But when a show is this awesome, it doesn't have to make sense. 
for the final episode, it did everything right. It had hype battles filled with the music of the show. It showcased all the characters fighting in their own ways. It showed how the characters grew throughout the story, and because of that, they were stronger now. So, yeah, this was a satisfying end. Though I am looking forward to season three, and hope that I will enjoy that as much as I have the first two.